Excellent. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to our podcast. I was going to say podcast because I'm in podcast mode. That's what I've been talking about for the last hour or so. Uh, but welcome to our webinar on uh, CRM in manufacturing with our guests here at Cloud9. Um, first, before we go into the Cloud9 piece, uh, talking about why CRM in manufacturing, um, you may not know much about Dynamics 365. Uh, and I want to just run through very quickly why you should be transacted Dynamics 365 and then hand over to Cloud9 to show you exactly how that will work. Uh, so I'm hoping the slide is going to progress now. So what we hear from our partners here at Ingram Micro Cloud is that quite often people are turning away opportunities because they don't know how to do Dynamics 365. Um, and if you are turning them away, you're missing out on some revenue there. We've averaged it out. We believe that most partners are missing out on about 10 deals per year. If you convert that to an average contract value, that's about $114,000 that you're missing out on by not doing Dynamics 365. So quite a large revenue numbers, and I'm sure everyone would like a slice of the pie for that. Um, there may be multiple reasons that you're not doing Dynamics 365. Um, we've put our on screen sort of six of the big ones that uh, that people don't do Dynamics 365, the reason why. Uh, it could be that you've never implemented it before. That, that first step can be quite daunting for a lot of partners, um, especially if you don't have the skill set internally to deliver it. Um, or if you've got other existing focuses, it might be something like cybersecurity or a voice program that you're trying to get on board with. And that may have taken away that focus from Dynamics. Obviously, if you do something like Dynamics 365, it could it could represent a big risk to your customer. If you, something went wrong, oh no, what you do, you've upset your customer relationship, you, you've got a fear of losing the remaining parts of the business as a result of it. Um, you've also got the, 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 the hurdle there where your sales team may not be up to speed on how to sell Dynamics 365 because it's not necessarily a tech-led conversation. It's much more a business-led conversation that your team should be having with end customers for that. And all of that may sound really daunting and that may, might lead to that whole, don't know where I'll start. Okay, so six big reasons there on why people aren't doing Dynamics 365. And we're kind of here to say, well, even with all of that, we're trying to make it really easy. You should still do Dynamics 365. Um, and there's a lot of value in doing that. First and foremost is that huge reduction in customer churn. If you are doing Dynamics 365, 25% reduction is what we've seen. Uh, we've even had some partners tell us that they see uh, their customer churn going down to as little 6% uh, because they've introduced Dynamics. Um, you've also got quite a large upsell on licensing in M365 on the back of selling Dynamics. Uh, people tend to go up through uh, through an upsell motion on the M365 SKUs. Um, and you've got, to, you've got to remember with a lot of end customers, when they allocate their IT budget, quite often you'll find that 40% of that budget is actually set aside specifically for CRM and ERP systems. So if you're not going after that, that portion of the budget, someone else is. And someone else will take that 40% quite happily. And you know what? They might sell M365 or they may, may sell Azure. And that's where you could potentially lose some more business because that Dynamics partner can do that. If Azure is a focus for yours, then you've also got a 10 times better penetration rate selling Azure in with the Dynamics 365 than you would through M365. And if it's an existing Azure customer of yours, generally you see the, the spend doubling within the first year as well. And there's a big call out in the middle there as well about the $17 ROI for every dollar spent on Dynamics. Um, that was a really good study that was done by, I think it's Nucleus Research, that showed that every dollar invested returned, if it's combined on CRM and ERP, just under that $17 mark. It's split somewhere down the middle there. Um, ultimately, we want to be able to tell you guys to sell Dynamics and then you become a one-stop shop for your customers on Microsoft Cloud. Um, it's worth looking at the earning potential as well. So, on uh, so take a mid-market customer for instance, you'll find that that could be 25 to 300 seats is normally what you consider that. Um, an average customer we've taken here 
would normally be about 20 seats of M365 Business Premium, which is about $400 of revenue. Then you take an average Azure consumption, it's about $100 a month on that. And then if you take the average then for Dynamics in the same size customer, that's about $665. So when you're comparing averages for one size customer, Dynamics gives you the largest revenue of the three clouds there. And then to add to that, for every dollar margin you make on M365, there's up to $8.23 margin back on Dynamics. So not only is that giving you the largest revenue number, it's actually the most profitable SKU that you're looking at on the slide there as well. So that's that's me saying you really should start talking about Dynamics and selling Dynamics. And now I'm going to pass it over to the Cloud9 guys to tell you how you can achieve that specifically in manufacturing. Thanks very much, Martin. Uh, pleasure to meet everyone today. Um, I'm Kurt. I'm the sales director here at Cloud9. Um, we've got a few things to talk you through today. Uh, firstly, who are Cloud9? So for those that don't know, it's a, a welcome and a hello uh, and tell you a bit more about what we do and some of the successes that we've had. Today's uh, webinar is certainly focused around the manufacturing sector. So we're going to talk you through some use cases and some of our uh, clients in that particular space, what they're doing, what they're being able to achieve by adopting Dynamics, but also Dynamics in conjunction with the other Microsoft suite of applications, which I'm sure many of you are already providing to those customers. So we're going to talk about the, the product suite, some of the features and those integrations that are, are really useful as part of the Microsoft stack, and then talk a bit more about how we can partner together to achieve more. So Martin great, made some great points there about perhaps why it's a little bit nerve wracking or maybe not want to dip your toes in to, to sell Dynamics directly. But what we've built over the last four or five years is a, a fantastically successful partner channel where we can effectively become a um, uh, an increased arm of your business or an extension of your business to provide dynamic services to customers and, and hopefully make them more sticky and reduce that churn rate. So we're just going to kick us off with a quick poll. Uh, it'd be great to know a little bit more about those people on the call, um, whether you know about dynamics, whether you're interested in offering it, um, you know, what was the main thing that brought you here today? Okay, good. So thanks for all, all for your votes. Um, so firstly, we'll, we'll kick off with, you know, who are Cloud9? So Cloud9 Insight, we are an exclusive Dynamics 365 CRM partner. So this is the only thing that we do. We've built our business over the last 12 years, implementing uh, Dynamics solutions for our customers. And while that's hugely important for our conversation today around partnering, is there is no conflict of interest between ourselves and our partners. So Dynamics is the only thing that we do, and that is an extension of the great services and offerings that you already offer to your customers as part of the wider Microsoft and also technology ecosystem. Um, we are a manufacturing specialist uh, in that um, one of our, our core three uh, sectors that we work within uh, is manufacturing. And perhaps even more importantly than that is all of our customers are in the SMB space and SMB channel. So we find that is um, certainly useful to have that experience of working with smaller businesses, perhaps making their first step into CRM or looking to migrate onto a more mature platform uh, like Dynamics. So we're certainly here to help businesses um, realize what CRM can do. Um, and you know, We're not in a huge enterprise projects. So again, it, it takes away that risk a little bit in terms of working together. Where we see ourselves as different and again resonating with the SMB feel is that we're extremely transparent around the project and also the project costs. So we like to identify risks with customers. We like to talk about those and how we're going to mitigate them. And we also give them a full trans, uh, transparency around what the costs are going to be. And that's really important for you as a partner as well, because if you're going to introduce us to your customers, you want them to make sure that they know exactly what's coming if they're going to embark on this CRM journey. So through you and through the conversations that we're having, we'll be helping those customers to really understand more about what the CRM project is going to look like and what it's going to cost and so on and so forth. I am clicking, but there is nothing happening, so I do apologize. I have to just bear with you. There we go. Uh, 
So we are a team of business consultants. Um, we're absolutely Microsoft Dynamics certified. It's a key importance of our team, but we approach this as a business conversation. And Martin made a great point that sometimes the pre-sales and the uh, discovery piece around Dynamics is quite a unique skill. And that's something that we bring with abundance. And we've implemented over 800 Dynamics solutions in our lifetime. So that's 800 chances to get it right. And why that's important is that's also 800 goes at bringing fresh ideas, bringing success stories from other clients and other businesses. So we can really help those those customers understand, firstly, what they don't know they don't know, but also what they can achieve with Dynamics as well. We cover the whole of UK and EMEA, so we've, we've absolute honor really to be um, the ESP elite service provider for Ingram Micro covering CRM in the, in the EMEA space. So um, we have clients across Europe, um, that we're helping with dynamics. Um, what we see is really important to all of these projects is training and knowledge transfer is perhaps the most important part to support that user adoption. So, so much so in that Cloud9 have a sister business fully owned and, and managed by ourselves called Cloud9 Learn and also Cloud9 Academy. So really to stress the emphasis on um, the importance of training and user adoption uh, and, and knowledge transfer around these tools that are gonna be implemented to the business. And we support that not just in uh, project-based training, but we also um, reiterate and reinforce that through post-project support that we call client success care package. And perhaps the highlight or flagship of that is we offer unlimited ad hoc training to all users as part of the client. Um, so that means that they have an unlimited resource to say, how do I do this? And as you'll all know, when you're embarking on new technology, it's um, hugely important that you're able to call on uh, that, that training need and make sure that you're absolutely able to use the system to its full potential. Hello everyone, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you today. So th I'm just gonna introduce like the key contact at Clara Insights, starting with our CEO, Colleen Jackson. So she's been working in the um, SMB space, his CRM for majority of her career and she's built uh, Cloud9 Insights 12 years ago. So she has a great knowledge and really like transfer her passion to work in the dynamic space and in the SMB space uh, for all this year. I personally lead on in the relationship with Ingram and also uh, the, with uh, our network of partners. So I will be your main port of contact tact really to explain and take you through your CRM journey. And I will hand over to uh, Jim to introduce himself. Oh, hello everybody, uh, my name is Jim. Uh, I'm a consultant here at Cloud9. Uh, my background is, uh, is business rather than technology. I started in uh, um, well, SMBs, uh, helped set up TalkTalk, Talk, was the car phone warehouse, companies like that, but at big PLCs, but I've also worked at small businesses and I critically uh, put a Cloud9, uh, sorry, with Cloud9, I actually put in a CRM system in. Um, and going through that experience, uh, I enjoyed working with software. I jumped to the dark side, if you like. Um, and now I sort of try and bring a, a business view of uh, how dynamics can and perhaps sometimes shouldn't be used. And we have a great relationship with uh, clients and looking at it from a user perspective rather than from a technology perspective. Thanks, Pauline. Thanks, Jim. So today, as you said, we're going to be focusing around the manufacturing space. Um, so uh, in front of you is just some of the great content that we create for uh, the manufacturing space around you know, guide to implementing CRM correctly, to case study videos, uh, to more white papers and understanding how to really make this a success. So what we wanted to do was just start with a bit of a conversation um, around what we're seeing as trends in the manufacturing space and the manufacturing market. And I think some of these will certainly resonate with you as uh, service providers into this sector, um, and also some of the perhaps areas of, of identification where a potential opportunity um, might be for Dynamics to work alongside the, the great tools and services that you're already offering. So um, I'm gonna rely uh, heavily here on, on Jim's expertise, being at the absolute coalface of dealing with customers, gathering their requirements, helping them with training and, and evidently going live um, with these systems. So Jim, I, I was just wondering if, if we could just have a, an open floor, open conversation, and perhaps you could kick us off by telling us some of the 
the key trends um, and, and key things that we're seeing that manufacturing businesses use CRM for, perhaps some of the problems that they're looking to solve? Uh, sure, no problem. Um, I, I, I think uh, with the manufacturing clients that we tend to, to we tend to see, very often they're on the more mature side. Um, quite of, of, often, um, long-standing resources, perhaps working in isolation. You know, they might be uh, covering uh, certain areas of the country, and, and certainly on the sales side, we we see a, a lot of history of. Um, little black books of names. Um, it seems to be a very common principle. So a very old fashioned way of, of, of working sales. And with that, we often see the owner of the business um, often coming to us saying that they're struggling to understand what their resources are doing at any one time. Um, and there's a big reliance on that get together, perhaps once a week, once a month, to actually understand what's happening in terms of sales within the business. Hmm. And and I imagine that with COVID, that's certainly been something that's accelerated this. So, um, you know, the, the inability perhaps to all get together, to have different people working from home and in a, in a hybrid environment. So what are some of the tools that Dynamics gives to a, a business owner or a business leader to give them an element of control about what people are doing or perhaps what's on the horizon for the business? Um, I think previously uh, getting that information out of uh, the sales team and, and, and the like has been very much a, uh, often a, a meeting back in the office and face to face. But since COVID and there's a lot more teams integration, some of these resources have adopted a little bit more in, in line with an online weekly sales meeting. But getting the information into that environment has been difficult. So they find that using the lead and opportunity records and dynamics to actually store information rather than the old Excel spreadsheets where they perhaps all had individual lists. It's much easier now for them to actually record the data inside a dynamic CRM system. Um, we see that they're, um, they're, they're, they're more used to this. Um, these clients often have resources that are, are very reluctant to accept change. Um, and, and to go into that new way of working. But since COVID, we've seen a little bit of a change in that, in that everybody you know, has now got used to working with teams. And I think they're finding it easier now to move on to a, an, an online platform like Dynamics, um, much easier than it was perhaps, uh, perhaps before. Okay, some really great points there, and I know you're going to hone in a little bit later on some of the great connectivity that Dynamics has with with Modern Workplace and and the rest of the Microsoft stack. Um, one one thing that perhaps interested me there was, you know, why is manufacturing a sort of particular niche sector for CRMs. I know we've been doing some work with them about the, the sales process, which perhaps doesn't sit with, with out of the box CRMs. You know, what have we been doing to help them and maybe why Dynamics is a good fit? Yeah, so one thing that they often have, which is quite different to, um, to, to other sales businesses, is they often have quite a complex bid and quoting process uh, in their sales cycle. And they often are providing a quote um, to a, a group of potential customers who themselves are bidding for the same piece of business. And historically, the, they would have uh, several, um, let's call them opportunities that they're trying to sell, but really only one of those is going to go live. And through uh, some work in Dynamics, we're able to actually aggregate those together. So actually, from a sales pipeline perspective, um, it, they, they can now understand that actually there's only one potential sale from these four to five different quotes that they've got going out. So we've been able to make changes in the system for manufacturing particularly that gives them visibility of that, which really means a true pipeline because before um, it was a bit of a guess as to uh, which one of the quotes would be there. And, you know, are, are we going to get a million quid or are we just going to get 200,000 quid because there's five different quotes out for it. So we do a lot of work to, uh, to try and simplify that uh, bid quote process for them. It's been very successful. Great. Yeah. And we, and we get fantastic feedback from that, from the business owners and business leaders to, as you say, looking at the pipeline, not five times because there's that many bids. It, it's you know being able to just say, well, actually, this is one deal and these are the potential. Uh, this is the potential outcome of, of revenue. So, so some really great insights there, Jim. And what I thought we'd just share with everybody now was, I mean, it's great for us to talk about it, but we've got a short snippet video of one of our customers, uh, a company called C Group. Um, who are a manufacturer uh, and um, we just wanted to give you a couple of minutes thoughts of their CEO uh, Robert Thompson who just tells you a bit more about the journey they've gone through in adopting CRM and working with Cloud9 to achieve that so um, just if technology allows me to I'm going to hopefully play this video for you all to hear.
so my name is Robert Thompson. I am the CEO of C Limited. Uh, C Limited is a, a company that's based in the UK. And below that company, we have three trading businesses in distribution and in manufacturing that specialize in timber based composites for various different market sectors. Okay, so the, the, ch the challenge that we had with with our existing CRM system is that they're all different for all the trading businesses within our group. Very much worked independently of each other. So from C Limited and our management, we didn't have full transparency of, of the opportunities that we were working on. And we didn't have consistency in relation to how the data was fed back up the line to the team. The reason we went with Cloud9 was purely as a byproduct of the engagement level and the confidence that came across um, on our uh, team's meetings um, during COVID. Unfortunately, we weren't allowed to, to, to meet with the team face to face, but they gave me a, um, a strong sense that A, they knew what they were talking about and B, that uh, Cloud9 could deliver. Uh, the benefits of the CRM is, is multifaceted. Uh, one of the, the, the key things for me is the, the CRM is, is just one cog in the wheel in terms of the bringing together the various different softwares uh, within the, the, the Microsoft package, which obviously have a, a great benefit to uh, the business operation. There's consistency in the information, there's a consistency in how that information is presented, uh, and that's a true benefit for us in relation to our CRM aspiration. We'll certainly be sharing out the, the video afterwards, but for just a summary recap, one of the most telling uh, points there that Rob made was talking around the um, you know dynamics being effectively one piece of the puzzle or, or one cog. Um, and what we see is so strong now is that message that Microsoft can offer of a one single business platform. So um, we're going to uh, following the the next slide to just talk you through some of the other clients as well is is to really hone in on well why is that such a strong message of of the Microsoft product suite and why should dynamics be part of that for for customers so um Jim we pulled up a, a few extra logos here just to um, again give a high level summary of some of the other manufacturers that we work with um, perhaps you could just talk us through some of these and some of their their challenges and what they do. Yeah, sure. Um, MTT, uh, industrial machine tool manufacturer. Um, uh, they work with local engineering firms up to JCB International. Um, worked for many years with Excel um, and wanted to move to a more central uh, central uh, database of records, if you like. Hallmark, um, very high tech manufacturer of veterinary MRI scanners for horses and small animals. They were a very much uh, a worldwide seller. Um, they had the US, European and Pan World operations. Their difficulty was, was being able to uh, get their different business functions to share information so that the, the service team knew what the sales team were doing, etc. C Group, we've just uh, seen manufacturer paneling. They would do large building construction, airport terminals, retail shopping centers, that type of thing. Um, Four Stones, paper products company making toilet paper, med me uh, medical sheeting, uh, very, very old fashioned business, um, but uh, wanting to, to move forwards the, um, and get good visibility of what the sales teams were doing. Appetito, um, they make ready-made foods. Um, again, uh, Clade, ES, uh, refrigeration equipment business, make green energy products like ground and air source heating. Um, Tech and Trop, industrial uh, door specialists. Uh, I, I mean, the, the greatest thing that they've got in common is that they're actually building something for somebody else, um, and you know, their, their their management of sales was was difficult, particularly because they were they were generally operating some very uh, traditional, let's call it traditional uh, traditional methods. Perfect. Thanks, Jim. So the the real point of this was to try and. Uh, bring some real life examples uh, to the table and, and hopefully kind of ring some bells with, with some of those on the session today of potentially similar, similar businesses. What we certainly see when customers are embarking on a CRM journey is sometimes it's a little bit more daunting than perhaps a, a modern workplace piece or, or something um, 
you know a little bit more simple so um actually having those real world stories and case studies and you know all the great video content which we can share um really helps to give customers confidence and, and you heard from rob when he spoke on the video um that that was really what made or what gave them the the confidence to proceed with dynamics is that we had uh, had that real world experience and that um, they had confidence in us to deliver. So um, we, we're going to delve into a little bit more to the product now, effectively. Um, and Jim, um, some of our, our guests today are going to be modern workplace Azure partners who are working with a, a great part of the Microsoft ecosystem. So we wanted to bring to the floor um, how Dynamics can just fit in ever so nicely alongside those tools. Okay. Um, so, you know, I mean, in terms of Dynamics and, and, and the range of products, there's, there's over 50 different uh, Microsoft products within the uh, Dynamics ecosystem, but they're not all targeted towards um, the SMB market. Um, you know, and some of these that uh, that we, we we display here, you know, they're related products that are like Power Automate, which is, is very much part of the, uh, very heavily used within Dynamics 365. But if we think about the core products that we we, we tend to, uh, work on the more traditional ones here are marked uh, CRM type products are marked in bold. We tend to install uh, these uh, in modules, um, principally because the uh, many of these modules have got pre-built configurations to help speed up the installation and it lowers the cost of entry uh, and and just makes it more successful. Um, sales, uh, hopefully, you know, just, it's about the sales. There's three different variants of that that we use to, traditionally now. Um, most clients tend to go for the enterprise because it's where Microsoft put all the bells and whistles. Customer service is very popular. Omnichannel is becoming more so because it gives us the ability to do uh, service customers and uh, re make responses through multi-channel, whether that's through Facebook, SMS, Teams, etc., in this in the same interface. Um, Microsoft have a big push on AI now, uh, so the customer service insight and sales insights um, is nearly always taken when somebody takes um, an enterprise product. And customer voice um, for um, uh, surveys and responses back, perhaps off the back of a uh, of a service event, has become extremely popular. And Dynamics Marketing is is growing. Um, there are many different marketing tools that we can integrate to Dynamics, but Microsoft have their own product, um, which has a very slick interface and is proving very popular. The, the, the items that are uh, not bolded here are a little bit more leaning towards ERP. Um, they are still used, though, by small and medium-sized businesses, particularly the field service side. Um, Field service um, is a very popular product, um, and it also comes with some extra bolt-ons, remote assist and guides, which gives people the ability to be able to um, see what an engineer is seeing at the time. Uh, very much on the ERP side, popular product is project operations, more at the medium side uh, of, the, of the businesses because of the um, it, it's pitched at a, a, a slightly higher license cost. And of course, Microsoft have got their own SMB um, finance package, Business Central, um, which is often uh, also taken, um, usually as a later phase, usually as a later phase. In, in terms of architecture that we don't generally deal with um, and how we, we, we enable it to work with uh, the Office Suite, um, Central to the Hook tool is, is Azure. By default, all of our installations go onto the existing customer tenant. Starting then on the left-hand side, um, data and software we record in, in Dataverse. Obviously, it used to be Common Data Service, which was a much more common sense name, but it's where the table structures and related database that uh, Dynamics users uh, sit. Most of our installations use Dynamics applications. Um, some of our installations use the Power Platform. In terms of the difference, think of it as um, like layers on a cake, really. So uh, if Azure is at the bottom, on top of that sits the Dataverse. On the Dataverse sits the Power Platform, which is the set of controls and tools that present the data. And Dynamics applications then sit on top, a little bit like the, I suppose, the icing. Um, both have very different licensing costs and additional features. Power Platform is very much targeted towards the uh, low, low cost installation. Um, Dynamics applications bring in the cream, you know, the icing, if you like. Um, Microsoft um, uh, like to put the bells and whistles in here, like AI learning. Uh, um, uh, the Dynamics applications carry a higher license fee, but there's much richer content, wider capability. Um, there's more pre-built functionality in there. Um, and there's more storage and uh, longer backup that comes with the license. 
on the right hand side of the screen here you'll see uh, you know the logo for power automate we use power automate a lot uh, in crm um, both to manipulate data inside crm and to move data outside crm to other software packages um, down in the bottom right you know you'll just see the word api um, it, in terms of uh, connecting dynamics is very adept at connecting to many many third party uh, systems um, you know, we do third party tools like finance packages, ERP tools, SaaS products like Zoom, MailChimp, Hootsuite, etc. And at the very bottom left, you've got your Office logo. So um, we integrate with Office uh, products on almost every uh, installation. So uh, let's have a little bit more uh, detail perhaps on there. Um, a key element that we lead with when talking with prospective customers is uh, exploiting the Microsoft stack that they are already paying for. And for those that uh, then are not, obviously there's potential extra licensing revenue there for you. Starting at the top, uh, the Outlook integration and appointments, emails, tasks, is by far the strongest item. Um, the ability to be able to see and record email interactions between employees uh, and the customers in one place without looking through individual people's outlook is the hugest, is the biggest hook um, that uh, they, they have with terms of dynamics. SharePoint is a very popular integration. Obviously the benefit of storing files in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, an existing already paid for SharePoint storage and not have to pay for additional dynamics storage uh, is, is very popular. Uh, we see OneNote quite regularly. Um, the OneNote tends to be a sticky pro tool for those those people that just love it, and and we integrate that, um, which then allows them to trigger uh, OneNote collaboration from inside uh, Dynamics Records, of course. Uh, and for reporting, um, aside from Dynamics uh, dashboards, we we regularly push data out uh, to Excel for things like Power Pivot reporting, uh, and we also push data out for uh, Power BI if a client wants some sort of super rich reporting. We can also embed Power BI reports back inside Dynamics against records. Um, the Power BI licensing obviously is a nice upsell um, for uh, any Power BI viewer in Dynamics still needs to take the, uh, the low cost um, Power BI add-on license. Um, in terms of um, uh, LinkedIn, it's a popular integration. Um, the LinkedIn sales navigator license is needed um, and that then enables them to control, instigate LinkedIn chats from inside Dynamics or push uh, LinkedIn contacts into Dynamics um, from LinkedIn itself. Um, and then finally, Teams. Um, Microsoft have been very busy in the last year um, and have released some very uh, uh, key, sexy enhancements, if you like, for Teams collaboration in the last few months. Um, Teams telephony can now be used as an integrated telephony tool inside Dynamics. So calls can be made, received via Teams, can be tracked and instigated from Dynamics records. Um, conversations can be transcribed, stored against the record. Analysis of the conversation can occur now, and we can even score the customer sentiment from the call. Um, we can also now visualize, operate linked uh, Teams chats from inside Dynamics records. Um, we can share the same uh, file storage area as a Teams record. So people that are working inside uh, Dynamics can use the same storage area as people that just work in Teams. Uh, we can also now create Teams meetings um, directly from uh, inside uh, Dynamics records. Um, so here's an example of the Teams chat uh, on the right hand side. You can carry on um, with two different systems in the same place, which makes uh, uh, life easier. We can link chats directly to the Dynamics records. So um, people can chat from elsewhere in the business, not just perhaps sales or service people that might be using the uh, Dynamics system. Um, we can uh, carry out in, uh, there's some AI now, which then goes and has a listen to the call recording afterwards and then feeds back um, sentiment uh, detection as part of that service. This used to be just um, a premium product, so part of the premium license, um, but now it's part of the enterprise license, giving you uh, about three hours per user per month um, conversation intelligence um, with the enterprise license. So they don't have to pay up for the full premium license now, which is a nice step forward. And as I said, document collaboration is very popular. You know, we have this uh, file explorer type view of LinkedIn, uh, of, of linked SharePoint locations. So it, again, it means that we can have people outside Dynamics uh, sharing uh, the same document storage areas people inside Dynamics. 
And uh, it might seem simple, but it is hot off the press in the UK. Uh, in the last few days, uh, Microsoft uh, released the Teams appointment uh, bookings direct from uh, Inside Dynamics. Um, and the, the one that's really led um, from the start is still the Outlook integration. You know, every client that we have is seems to be happy to pay for Outlook. Um, and Dynamics integration to it is seen as very much a, a free benefit, if you like, of, of something that they're already paid for. Um, Microsoft have been trying to counter some of the uh, Salesforce reporting graphics recently. Um, we've released a new forecast uh, tool, which better displays the pipeline to budget. It's a very popular tool with um, sales management um, and C-level individuals. They can actually now see uh, performance to budget live. They don't have to wait for the uh, weekly uh, sales meetings. Uh, the Microsoft have released some new tools like Deal Manager with this new uh, bubble interface um, to show sellers what sales are coming up in imminently and you know which are the important ones to manage. We're still keeping the good old fashioned uh, Kanban view, uh, it's still very popular. We have a lot of clients that still operate with this type of view, it's old schoolish, but it's for them it works, so the facility is still there. And in terms of what's coming next, um, we think the next big thing is going to be Loop. Um, as you probably have seen in, 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 in the press, Loop's very still much in its uh, team's infancy, infancy, but it's um, coming as a quite a major architecture change for Microsoft, we think. And at the moment, as the components become available in Teams, we, we, we see immediately shortly after the integration to Dynamics uh, then flows. So, uh, sorry, I know it's exciting and a bit geeky to talk about some of this stuff. And that's enough about the uh, technical side. Let's uh, talk about some money. Um, over to Pauline. Thank you, Jim. And uh, now we're really excited by these new features. But yes, like now we're going to talk of like what's in it for you uh, as a partner. So to echo really to what Martin said, like you may really not know how, where to start. You've heard about Dynamics and like how it works, but like it's now time really to talk about it. So that's the opportunity you now to talk about us with us today. And like to become really like a one shop, one stop shop for your uh, customer. I think that's the key here. So we would be then like the extension of your business and you could diversify your portfolio and offering Dynamics 365 thanks to us. We would do the job, you would get a new revenue stream. So as like Martin said, with the great numbers that you can make with the mar mar margins and the licenses, you will retain the licenses and we would provide a free pre-sales. So no matter what will happen, you know, with your customer, you can intro uh, your customer to us, we would like then provide like the free pre-sales. We can also train you as we hear a lot of time, maybe like the sales team don't really know how to start or how to engage. And as we said, it's more like a business uh, lead uh, conversation than technical. So, you know, we can train you, we can explain and really like we can uh, help you through the way. And yeah, there is no better time than now to uh, sell Dynamics 365. And only 2% of like more than workplace users are using Dynamics 365. So it's, you know, there is a big, big gap and an opportunity there uh, for you to, you know, to feel and to, for us to help you as well. And Dynamics 365 is proven to like improve years after years. We know that, you know, like this Microsoft has been like really improving this tool and now it's working better and better after year. And this can increase really your revenue by 84%. And also the Azure consumption, it's been proven that by you know, using uh, Dynamics 365, your customer can double their Azure consumption and also create you know, new projects, being more like interested in the power apps, loop, you know, like they will come, there will come a time where they'll be like, hey, it integrates with other products. So this will link to new projects for you as a partner. So very exciting time uh, for you. And just like we want, really want to let you know that we have everything ready in terms of marketing content. If you want to create some joint campaign or just, you know, to have, have training internally to really uh, help your sales team to prospect and to go after like opportunities. So we are ready. We have all the content to share with you. So really more than happy to collaborate. And in terms of um, the relationship that we have with Ingram, yep. we are ready to partner. Everything has been already agreed. 
rates, contract, marketplace, it's all sorted. So we are ready to partner, ready for you. And what can happen uh, next? We can ask Kurt, the sales director, he will explain like once you know you've introduced like an opportunity to us. Kurt, what's Thanks, happened? Thanks, Pauline. So we try to make it as simple as possible. Um, and <clears throat> what we found works very well is certainly members in, in my team um, and, and no doubt members in your team um, become, if you like, extended colleagues, um, become friends, um, you know, become great at working together and identifying opportunities. So the first thing that happens is uh, if, if you want to work with us on some internal training on some of the content, the joint marketing, as Pauline discussed, the first thing of the sales process would be to identify an opportunity. So that can then be shared through through Martin at Ingram um, or, or directly with us. Um, and the, the first thing that we would do um, is organize the, the pre-sales. So we would go through an introductory call. Um, we would then help the client with a presentation of well, this is how we're going to support you. This is how Dynamics is going to work for you. Talk about some of our ex experience that's relative to them. And as we said at the top of the hour, talk, talk them through the transparent cost modeling, which perhaps we see as the most important part is ensuring that uh, absolutely the clients are aware of what's coming, aware of the cost, both from an upfront and from an ongoing uh, piece as well. All of those costs will, will go through you. So you can retain the billing relationship, you keep the licenses, everything uh, as it's your customer. Um, we, we do everything uh, based on your approval and your say so. And once the client is happy to proceed, the first piece would be to work with Jim or, or members of Jim's team um, to deliver requirements gathering. So detailed scoping workshops. And we often find that these identify perhaps further things uh, that need to be delivered further benefits of the Office 365 suite. So it's not just all about dynamics here. We're often unearthing other projects and other um, areas of improvement that could be done across the Microsoft stack. Great new projects for you guys. Uh, and once we've done those requirements, we go through rigorous review process, make sure the client's absolutely happy with what's going to be delivered, and then go through uh, and, and start the project um, and move them through that stage uh, into training, into go live, and then support them on an ongoing basis as well, which as we always say, can be done directly with the customer, or if you're perhaps a larger uh, MSP, um, we do a lot of back-to-back -back support agreements as well. So if the client wants to keep that one single number, um, we work it out between us and uh, and support them um, to make sure that they've got everything that they need. So just to round off some of the key messages, firstly, we're Cloud9. The only thing that we do is Microsoft Dynamics. Please see us as an extension of your team. If you want to increase your portfolio, if you want to um, hopefully Im increase the stickiness of customers and make sure that they're not going off to other uh, larger partners or other partners that are more one size uh, you know, fits all, so we can be that extension of your team. Um, Jim, thank you so much for your insights today around manufacturing, some of the fantastic trends that we're seeing. You know, Why would CRM be useful? Is it giving us back control, visibility? Um, how can we work better in this hybrid working from home landscape? And you also talked us through some fantastic features around not just dynamics, but also how well it works with the rest of the Microsoft stack. So the Teams integration, Outlook, Power Platform, and, and all of the great things to come in terms of Loop and, and many other um, interactions. <clears throat> we also talk through how our partner process works. So whether that's you want to be a reactive partner, Give us a call when somebody says the word dynamics, absolutely fine. Or maybe on the flip side, you want to be more proactive, have it as part of your website, have it as part of your sales team's you know, playbook and offering. We can absolutely support you on that journey in terms of internal training and internal knowledge share. Um, and perhaps the best thing of it all is by being part of this fantastic Ingram ecosystem that we're all uh, you know, a pleasure to be a part of, is that everything is ready to go in terms of um, contracts. You know, We can organize personal NDAs absolutely if needed, but we're all signed up to that marketplace. So our services are ready to provision, ready to purchase through the marketplace, all of the rates agreed and everything else. So we can just purely focus on how can we help this customer? How can we help them do more? Um, and thank you so much for attending today. And um, we're going to finish with a final quick poll. Um, so please feel free to, to pop in if you want to have a, a particular um, call, we'd be delighted to do so or if you want to um, just receive um, some email follow-up with the video with some sound. Um, so apologies for any of you that didn't hear that, um, then we'd be delighted to follow up. 
Okay. Um, so that's it. Uh, thank you so much again for joining us today. Thanks to um, Martin, Jim, Pauline. Um, I've kind of adopted this role as host. That wasn't intentional, but that's how it's, it's worked out. So uh, any final comments from you, Martin? No, I think you've done a great job there. Appreciate it. Pay you later. <laughs> <laughs>